Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. This is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode. This is where I check out the coolest creations from LEGO that I've seen people making throughout the week, choose my 10 favorite, talk about them, and also I, at the end of the episode, I will show off the fan creations, the pictures that you guys have been submitting to me throughout the week. And if you yourself wanna have one of your LEGO pictures appear in another Sunday Top 10 Mock episode for next week, just email me at the proper email in the description below. And also, by the way, the description also has links to every single uh, top 10 mock creator and a few others that maybe didn't make the list but I also really like so I suggest you guys check out the description if you want to learn more about any of these builders I'm talking about so with that said let's jump into number one this is plants versus zombies Michael Jackson the builder Lego 7 has been making excellent creations and here we have a very specific kind of build it's not just Michael Jackson but the way Michael Jackson is portrayed in the plants versus zombies game and I haven't played plants versus zombies in forever but there was something so recognizable about the build style and sort of the art style behind uh, the way this guy was put together that as soon as I saw PBZ as an abbreviation, I was like, oh wow, this has got to be Plants vs. Zombies. Now, number two is a pretty disturbing build. I will admit it's called Escape of the Colorful Monster by Pistache. As far as I can tell, I think each one of these colorful sections of the colorful monster was built by different builders, and then it all comes together in this weird sort of Tetsuo Akira kind of build at the end. I don't know if there's like a deeper hidden message in this build that I'm not getting, Getting, but the image sure is striking and I just had to include it. Now the only reason why this next build isn't higher up on my list is because I've been shown just way too many different Falcon builds recently on top 10 and I wanted to not include this but it's just such an awesome build. This is Tony Stark's Iron Falcon by Zane Houston. Now for those that haven't seen the two themes married together obviously it's the Millennium Falcon but built in a similar sort of build style or art style as Iron Man and not just the color combination. I really mean the actual build style is um, sort of sectioned off in these fun little sort of clean cut angles. Personal favorite touches are definitely the glowing arc reactor in the center instead of a turret. And I also like that the radar dish is actually just a flap that opens up and it looks like we've got some hidden projectiles or missiles or something on the inside. Now moving down to number seven, we've got a build by George Pantelion. This is Plankton or Sheldon J. Plankton from SpongeBob. Now I didn't know what those smaller details were around Plankton body until I took a closer look and those are actually the minifigure scaled versions of Plankton from the Spongebob sets which is basically just one of those little cylinder pieces with his face printed on the side. It's kind of a funny touch. I don't honestly know if that really improves the overall look of this mock but it's kind of sort of a Plankception of uh, Lego pieces. Now this next one moving down number six is a little bit more thought provoking and certainly sends a bigger message than I think maybe the average uh, Lego build that will show on this episode it's called Garbage in Paradise by Full Plate. Now the message behind this build is pretty clear. It was actually created for an AFOL contest with the topic of under the surface and of course it shows a wonderful paradise beach setting on the top with some great builds for palm trees and some relaxing uh, patrons enjoying the sand and surf while just underneath the surface you can see a ever larger growing pile of trash and garbage. Ultimately the build here is amazing. It's not just the message that's included. The actual quality in which this sort of vignette or slice of life has uh, been shown off is really clever with the water sort of fading away halfway through. Now here is a grandiose build with a pretty simple name just called Fairy Treehouse by Random Vector. And this sort of, to me, kind of represents the ultimate version of what maybe elves sets could look like in their absolute best custom modified form. It's not, of course, the same theme at all. This is maybe even more reminiscent of something like Fern gully. It's just kind of a fantasy land of its own that might just have very large creatures. Doesn't really matter. The build is awesome. The build is amazing. The tree is so cool. I love the white water effect used for the waterfall. There are brick built versions of fern leaves, which I really like. I haven't seen that before. And maybe my favorite part of the build is the bean pod boat. This is something that I think would look incredibly awesome on display. I always appreciate the idea of building a big thing up as opposed to wide. Now for build number four, I'm about to say something that I've heard people say all the time, but I've never said myself. This is something that I didn't know I wanted until I saw it, and this is the Mad Max War Rig, but it's done in Technic. Kirill Mazarov is the original builder, and we've seen so many War Rigs and Giga Horses and all the other Mad Max vehicles built from Lego system bricks ever since the movie came out. I mean, this really captured, I think, the uh, creative minds of a lot of builders, but this is the first time I've seen such an awesome Technic detail 
handheld vehicle like this. And I really think the Technic does add sort of a cool, unique, and kind of awesome quality to the vehicle. The shapes are all represented quite well. And I like that, you know, the original war rig has parts of other car frames sort of welded onto the body. You can see here in the Technic that it does look like other pieces of Technic cars actually welded on. But I'm just kind of blown away uh, having not seen something like this attempted in the Technic medium before and attempted so successfully. Now this is kind of by accident, but number three is called the Pilgrim and it does also sort of remind me of some characters that we also saw from the Mad Max movie. This character though, the Pilgrim, is totally different. It's built by the builder Vince Talos and I'm not really sure what to make of this fantasy land, this creature. There's such a weird sort of story behind this. I have no idea if this is like a character from a pre-existing story or video game or anything. I don't think it is. But here we've got some sort of alien creature, but very much on sort of a, a solo journey traveling through some kind of land. It's got a breathing apparatus, a bag of tools, and what could either be a walking stick or it might be a staff of some sort. The main body piece, by the way, is an upside down Galador body part, and the eyes actually stick into where the legs normally would. As much as licensed Lego builds are awesome, there's something so cool about being able to sort of see an entire story, an entire brand new world just by taking a look at one very detailed character. Now let's stay on that fantasy theme for number two. This is Tea Dragon and sort of the uh, underlining tone of the theme is a little bit fun and innocent and almost a little silly with a giant dragon drinking a little cup of tea. You can see the mixing spoon and another sort of biscuit or something on the plate. The head has been completely redesigned to the point where it doesn't really have to fit into the same sort of fantasy constructs of how normally a dragon face would look. And the same kind of goes along for how the body is built as well. The wings are relatively small and they look like they're made from flowers or something. You can even see some flowers growing out of some antlers in the back of the head. It's mostly made of Technic and Bionicle pieces with uh, just a few system bricks thrown in for certain areas of the detail, which makes it kind of enhanced in a very fun way. And though I've never really been a big fan of buying Bionicle sets, because seeing builds like this really is kind of a totally different, unique sort of animal of uh, Lego building as opposed to regular system bricks. Also, doesn't the head of this dragon kind of look like the queen alien head or something? Anyways, let's move on to number one. This is something that I just couldn't believe when I saw this build. The concept is so simple, yet the execution is so grand. It's the reverse hollow chest build by Josh Fowler. Now, if you're familiar with the pretty iconic scene from the very first Star Wars film, A New Hope. This is sort of a fun play on sort of an opposite universe where the uh, holographic hollow chess players that destroy each other on the chessboard have now taken over the interior, a very large interior of the Millennium Falcon, and the original players R2-D2 and Chewie are now the hollow chess players on the board in the middle. It's so simple and funny, yet look how massive this setting is. I like kind of how the builder stuck to a very monochrome or at least solid color for each each one of these characters, pretty similar to sort of the claymation stop motion animation that we got for the original hollow chess. And probably the funniest touch is this weird sort of worm-like creature seems to have found the blaster shield helmet that Luke wears. And there's just something that tickles me every time I see the entire setup put together with all of the characters in one room. Hats off to you, this is a crazy build. I really like it a lot. And very quickly, here are some other really cool mocks that I did not include for this week, but are also certainly worth taking a look at. Links to these guys builds are also in the description below. And now let's jump into the fan mock creations. Remember, if you guys want to send in your pictures of your Lego builds, the email is in the description below. And I always try to say this at least once every Sunday episode, but please don't send the pictures on Facebook or Instagram or try to link your Flickr account or something. We go through around 100 emails every single week and production goes, it just goes a lot faster if you can send some JPEGs to the same email address. It makes our lives uh, much much easier. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching and uh, here's the fan box.